As the younger brother, I played a lot of handheld games growing up. Yeah, my older brother would hog all the consoles that we had, so I would be relegated to using my Game Boy Advance or my Nintendo DS or PSP, whatever console I had at the time. Even on Christmas break when we got the Wii, I would wake up to my brother already playing Twilight Princess and I'd have to wait hours to get a go myself. And this brings me on to the Steam Deck, which I'm holding very awkwardly, but the Steam Deck, which is actual console quality on the go. It's absolutely insane how good this is. Look, I love my Switch and my Vita, but Sony let the Vita die a slow death, and the Switch isn't powerful enough for my liking anymore. Yeah, the Nintendo first party stuff is great and it runs well, but the other games, like even some indies are starting to struggle now. I haven't been playing my Switch much at all in the past couple of months. But I've had this Steam Deck for two weeks now, and I seriously, I haven't stopped playing it. I absolutely love it. My PlayStation 5 is practically just sitting in the corner collecting dust right now, and my Switch is collecting even more dust. It also got me onto buying games on Steam, which is something I haven't done in like 6 or 7 years because I used to be a PC gamer and then I fell out. So if you love handheld gaming, then stick around for this review of the Steam Deck after about 2 weeks. So we'll start with the form factor. Now this is big. It's actually very big. When I saw it come out of the box, I was like, Jesus Christ, that's an absolute monster. But it's really not that heavy. It's only slightly heavier than the Switch. But because it has these little parts here, it's actually a nice, it's really nice to hold after trying to play the Switch after this. The Switch is just basically a flat tablet. So it just doesn't feel as ergonomic. Now, as I said, it is definitely bulkier, but not, not so much so. And then... When it comes to the actual controller itself, so again, I'm going to be doing a lot of comparisons to the Switch, but the analog sticks, actually good analog sticks, like look at the height, like the Switch analog sticks literally stick up, I'm trying to get this in focus, literally stick up to where the li this little plastic bit comes out, the Switch analog sticks are absolutely terrible on the Joy-Cons, and then the buttons themselves, like these buttons are like, they're fine, they feel like Xbox 360 buttons, so they're grand. These just feel so much better when you go back to the Switch and they don't have the the, the proper triggers. Like, the Switch ones are just like little buttons, it's just, eh. The Switch just, it just doesn't, the Switch feels more premium than this. As in, like, the screen is nicer, it feels sturdier, kind of. Even though the Joy-Cons do wobble a bit, but it does feel sturdier, definitely. And then the screen, as I said, is, is more, uh, more premium. But... The Switch doesn't have these buttons, which is great, back buttons for, you know, you can assign these to anything you want. Now, I think only really one of them is useful by the way I play, because I play like this. So I only have this finger to do it, where I think most people would almost play like this. But I play the claw method, where my index finger holds it like this. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're cool. And then the track pads, which I thought maybe would be cool, uh, they work. And they work pretty well, but I tried to use them in a game that used a mouse and it just didn't feel great. And then I was thinking, oh, maybe it actually might be a good, uh, might be good for FPS shooters, but it's not. It, it might be good, but it's just kind of hard to do because, I don't know, that doesn't feel very natural holding my thumb down here to aim. Like, my thumb naturally goes up here and not here, so that's kind of cramped. So, like, from the form factor it is, it, it, it's very solid especially since like valve aren't really a, a hardware company so they did a really good job on this but enough rambling about the form factor that's important but more importantly are the games and that's what we're all here for so i will talk about the ui and the user experience after the games but the games are more important so i played a long list of games over the past two weeks so i've put like 20 hours into elden ring i've played a bit of bpm i've played a bit of shovel knight dig I've played a good bit of Vampire Survivors, which I love that game. I've played older AA and AAA games like Call of Juarez, Gunslinger, Shadow of Mordor, and they run absolutely fantastic. This console is seriously not short of spectacular. I genuinely love it. Now, I also did a lot of remote play for my PS5, and I think that's going to be like the, my main use case for my Steam Deck going forward because the results were really, really surprising. And I know obviously they will vary depending on how strong your internet connection is. And I don't really have too great internet. Like I pay for 500 megs, but like on, on any given day I could get, you know, 80 down and 20 up. So while it is good, it's not like fantastic. So I'd be really interested to see if I actually got the speeds I paid for, which I don't unfortunately. So yeah, I think that's going to be my main use case. But we talk a bit about like the games individually. So obviously every single Steam Deck video in the world needs to talk about Elden Ring. 
And I mean, fair enough, because this is an Elden Ring machine. I've put like 22 hours in two weeks back into Elden Ring. I started a new character. And now it does only run it at 30 FPS, but it's a solid 30 FPS. And the port on the PC and on the PS5 wasn't great at launch. So the fact that this even runs on a Steam Deck at 30 FPS is quite, quite amazing. So I started a Paladin character on it and I'm at the Altus Plateau now. And I just have like no issues. I was thinking maybe, okay, Elden Ring is an open world game. So I might download it on my PC, download it on my Steam Deck. And obviously you have the cloud saves, which is fantastic. And then I would, you know, run around the open world, do the small dungeons, do the easy areas on the Steam Deck as it's 30 FPS. And then I'll leave the big bosses to play on my PC. But I've beaten, I've killed Renala, I've killed Godfrey, I've killed all these big bosses and have had no issues. Again, obviously I'm playing it at 30 FPS, but that's a compromise I'm willing to take if I can play Elden Ring on the go. Like, I went to London now, I didn't play this on the plane, but I had it with me. And, like, just the fact that I could have played Elden Ring on a plane, like, that's just absolutely insane. And when it comes to the older titles, like Call of Juarez and Shadow of Mordor, I was running them at 60 FPS, like, Shadow of Mordor, I think I'm running, like, anywhere from high to ultra graphics. I think I might have a few things on medium, and I'm getting a solid 60 FPS. Like, that's just absolutely, it's just mind-blowing. It, it's what I wanted in a handheld. The only issue I'm having with it is the screen. It's really not great, and coming from the OLED Switch and the Vita, there's a lot of room for improvement. Now, I can, I'd imagine in the future, they're going to have a, a Steam Deck with an OLED screen, and that is 100% a day one purchase for me, because that would, I think that would make this the perfect console. I don't want to call it perfect. Obviously, there are issues with it. There's a few, like, there's a few glitches with, like, starting up games that maybe don't work, but in general, like, it's, it's just a great thing to use, and again, the screen, bit, the screen is okay. But it could be a lot better. The bezels are thick on it as well, which some people will not like. Bezels don't bother me too much. Obviously, the less bezels, the more premium it looks. But at the end of the day, it doesn't bother me too much. And then, of course, the indie games. I've played BPM. I've played Vampire Survivors. I've played Shovel Knight Dig. I've played a few other indie games like Dusk, that FPS shooter, and it works really well. The reason why the Switch was so popular, yeah, you have all the Nintendo games, but it was just a great indie machine. Like, people playing Dead Cells and Binding of Isaac on the go. It was like, that, that was the reason why it was so good. But even now, some of the indie games that I play on my Switch, they have issues. Like, there's a few glitches here specific to the Switch version, or there's a few, you know, bad performance in certain areas. Whereas, you can almost pretty much guarantee... I haven't run into a game that has struggled to run on this. Like, I, I played a bit of Fallout New Vegas. That game notoriously doesn't run very well on PCs. And it worked like that the second I, I turned it on. Now, it'll be interesting to try Fallout 3, because that game's even worse for running. And it gives games like, say, Skyrim on the Switch. Like, Skyrim on the Switch, yeah, it was great. It was portable, but it was 30 FPS. But then we can play Skyrim at 60 FPS portably. So it's just a no-brainer. I think the only thing the Switch kind of has over it is the gyro. Now, to be honest, I'm not sure if this has gyro, if it doesn't have gyro. But they didn't make it very clear or how to turn it on. But that's an issue that I'll talk about later. But my main use case has been streaming my PS5 to it. And it's just brilliant. So I'm replaying God of War because I want to make a review before the next one comes out for the channel. And it was torn. Like, it was on sale on Steam for €40. Euros. So I was like, well, I just buy it and play it at, like... I think you can get it to run at, like, 40 FPS. Which is perfectly fine on the Steam Deck. Or do I want to play a 60 FPS version on the PlayStation 5 that I already own? So I downloaded it on the PlayStation 5. And then I decided... Hmm. I wonder if I could stream this to my Steam Deck. Lo and behold, you can. This is on Linux. So there are a few little things you have to do. But it's really not that complicated. I watched one YouTube video. And I got it up and running. And... I would say 98% of the time this runs perfectly. The odd time there's a bit of artifacting. I haven't noticed any input delay. Again, this can vary depending on the speed of your internet. And then there's been a few glitches where the screen goes white. But other than that, this has been like so smooth. Like I, I can parry enemies. And I'd imagine, obviously I don't own the game so I can't really run a test. But I would imagine this looks better streaming to my PlayStation than playing it natively on like low to medium settings on the Steam Deck. And also I don't have to pay 40 euro because I already own the game. And I was thinking in the future like Sonic Frontiers is coming out and that's coming to Steam and they've already said it's verified for Steam Deck. I was like, oh, I'd love to play that on the go. But now I'm thinking, why don't I just get the best of both worlds? Because I'm still a console gamer at hand. Like this is a console PC, you know? So it's, you can tinker with it, but in most cases you can just turn it on, download the game and play it. But I am a console gamer. So, I think I'll just buy Sonic Frontiers on PS5, and then if I want to play it, just stream it. 
rather than buying it on the PC and then having to sit on my PC. Because another thing about the Steam Deck is that a lot of us, including myself, work at a PC all day. So I don't want to sit in this chair and play more games on my PC. I want to kind of remove myself from it. So in this case, if I have a game on PC, I can play it natively on it, assuming it will run, which in most cases it will, maybe at 30 FPS lower graphics. Or now, my PlayStation is set up in my office here, so now I can just stream it, so I can, you know, go into the sitting room or lie in bed and play it, and that's what I've been doing. And like, I didn't think. Now this is for a 600. Like I paid 600 for this. I paid 50 over the asking price, which isn't too bad. But then my pre-order came came true like two weeks later. So you know, we live and learn. But like, I didn't think this would be a streaming machine, but it is definitely going to be a streaming machine. And then the odd games that come to PC. Because there are a lot of games that say only launch on PC. And I want to play them, but I don't want to sit at a PC. So now we can get them on this. And the last thing I want to talk about the streaming is I put it to the test. Modern Warfare 2 beta was out, so I was like, okay. I'm going to download it. I want to play it. But let's stream it to my Steam Deck from my PlayStation 5. And now, to preface of this, I'm used to playing competitive multiplayer games like Rocket League and whatever FPS Overwatch at 144 hertz on a really low response monitor so I can definitely notice like if I play Rocket League at 60 FPS or I play Rocket League at 120 FPS or I play Rocket League at 144 hertz or hertz not FPS I can notice the difference because I put like 1500 hours into that game so if there's even a 0 .00 whatever millisecond response time difference I can feel it and it was completely playable. Like, it doesn't feel as good as playing it natively. Which obviously, like, come on. We can't expect anything more than that. But I was getting kills, which is insane. Like, I could kill people. I was streaming a multiplayer game from a PlayStation to a Steam Deck and being able to react to people in time. So I think if you're, like, one of these people that plays, say, Call of Duty in your sitting room, lying back on your couch on a 52 inch screen and you don't even have game mode turned on, you will not notice the difference between playing it on the PlayStation 5 and streaming it on the Steam Deck, assuming your internet is as good or not better than mine. So that just blew me away. This is, streaming is slowly but surely becoming viable. Again, it will never be 100% because I just, I don't understand the internet and stuff well enough to be able to speak on it, but you can always notice the difference between playing something streamed and playing something natively. But this is very, very close. It is 100% playable. And I, as I said, I'm playing a big blockbuster game like God of War, where maybe the combat isn't so, you know, heavily reliant on timing, but I can parry enemies. So if you're looking for something to stream your, stream your PS5 as well as play games, then this is an absolute no-brainer, if you can get your hand on one. But Valve have just fulfilled a load of pre-orders early, so it is good. So then the UI and UX, it did take me a while to get used to it. And in general, it's easy to find things, but there were still a few things that were like, oh, this was way too awkward. But the thing that tripped me up the most was trying to redeem a code on Steam or add a non-Steam game. I assumed you would go into Steam, go into your library, and then you'd find something there like a plus symbol down the bottom. But no, you have to press the Steam button and then scroll into your settings and then scroll down to library. And it's like, there's a few things, I can't really think of them off the top of my head right now, but there, there are a few things like that, where it's like, oh, that, that definitely could have been easier. And then when it comes to like the user experience, it's like really, really solid because obviously Steam is like, Steam is already a great system with your reviews for games, which is something every console should have. So the app that you use to stream PS Now is called Chiaki, and you download that desktop mode and then you set it up to run in Steam. And again, it was pretty easy. It was just following a YouTube video. But natively, the PlayStation button and the touchpad isn't assigned to anything. But you could just go on the Steam community and people have already downloaded it. So now I believe the touchpad is the left, the left uh, trackpad and the PlayStation button, I believe, is the right touchpad. And it just, it just works. It just works. There, there are a few little hiccups from the user like experience, but in general, it's pretty easy to use. Now, I think... There's plenty of tinkering to be done. So I think if you're somebody who just wants a handheld console, from my experience, I've used it mostly as just a handheld console, like just go on the Steam, download the game, start it up, maybe fiddle around with a few settings to get it running properly, but that's just PC gaming. But like, yeah, it, it is. From, from that sort of, I just want a handheld console, 
it works really well but then they also give you the freedom even though linux is fucking stupid i hate linux it makes no sense you need to download stuff to run exe files like come on it just makes no sense and i know there's gonna be people like oh linux is so good but people who think linux is better no stop it's not it's very confusing just use windows but there is plenty of tinkering to be done for the people who want to tinker like i downloaded the better sadx mod for sonic adventure one now my results weren't very good i don't know what i did wrong but it didn't really work it worked but then the game would crash after entering one level which i don't understand what's going on and i wasn't really arse trying to figure it out but there is that sort of you know there's plenty of tinkering to be done but also plenty of frustration if that tinkering doesn't go well but in general it's pretty easy to understand so now do i think my 600 euro was wasted and no i don't i love this i think it's easy to see that i love this i think i've said i love this maybe like five or six times in this video but this is going to be a staple in my gaming as i said my playstation 5 my switch have been collecting dust for the past two weeks now obviously things will revert back as this becomes like less of a new toy but i can see myself using this pretty much every single day until the thing breaks basically because if i'm not playing the game on the steam like if i'm not playing game on steam I will stream my PlayStation if I just want to lie in bed or sit on the couch to play my PlayStation and not have to move it around. So I think just that that alone, maybe it's not worth 600 euro because you could just stream it to your phone and buy the backbone controller. But I think the fact that I have everything here in one, I can play games, I can go on the internet if I really want to, I can tinker around with things, I can get every single game I want on Steam and then I can stream my PlayStation and then also there is a way that you can get xbox game pass and xbox cloud and all that so like yeah i love this thing well worth the 600 euro my eyes and i'm glad i bought it so i would love to know what you think of the steam deck because it's becoming easier to find so hopefully if you are looking for one you did get one but i would love to know what you think of the steam deck of the video if you're gonna buy one or if you have one do you like it do you think it's a waste of money i don't know let me know and I really appreciate everybody watching. So like the video, subscribe, uh, join the Discord. The Discord is popping off, as the kids say. And uh, yeah, thank you. Goodbye.